Coming up on the Tuesday edition of Sports Showtime, the Tiger basketball team continues SEC play. Could they make it two wins in a row? Plus, more big news in the offseason from the LSU football team. And the Lady Tiger gymnastic team goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with the four-time defending national champions. We'll bring you all the results and more right now. This is Sports Showtime on Tiger TV. Shoot sports, show time in the towns. Get the scoop on the ball and sneak peek on the track. Key in on the field when them tigers attack. In fact, you get it back a few times a week. But it starts on Tuesday, third day of the week. They're beast when they broadcast. Increase like a fall class. Critique when I speak by my squad in the quad, man. Yeah, they the stars on the quad, man. That's the TVC, Tiger TVP. Every game, every star, every player, every situation. They facing the star in the making And you get it first exclusively Yeah, I know you're feeling me Who want the latest on the T-I-G E-R-S huh. That's the Mellon Shoot Tigers We get it sparking like a fire Higher. Welcome into Sports Showtime, your source for everything LSU athletics. I'm Brian Thompson. And I'm Mary Claire Palmer. Later on, we'll have the highlights from the men's basketball this weekend. But first, big news from the LSU football team. LSU wide receiver Brandon LaFell announced that he will return for his senior season. LaFell took the football world a little bit by surprise when he declared for the draft and was projected to be a second or third round selection. The junior receiver by far had his best year receiving, leading the team with 929 yards on 63 receptions with eight touchdowns. There's no doubt he would make an impact on Sundays in the league, but could definitely gain useful experience with another year at LSU. With LaFell returning, defensive end Ricky Jean-Francois will be the only underclassman leaving the Tigers early. More on the impact of LaFell's decision later on in the show. Now over to the PMAC, where the previously 14th ranked Lady Tigers of Gymnastics took on the University of Georgia. The Lady Tigers have won their first two meets of the season, and we're looking to keep their momentum going. LSU started the night strongly, posting a 49.225 on vault. However, as the meet continued, the Gym Dogs only got better and pulled away with the lead. Despite LSU senior Ashley Clare currently tying for first with the vault title, Courtney Coupets and the rest of the Georgia squad proved to be too much for the Lady Tigers. The Georgia Gym Dogs won a meet by a final score of 196.85 to LSU's 195.95. The University of Georgia's Courtney Capetz took the all-around title with a score of 39.65. But scores aren't always enough to explain a loss. Sports Showtime reporter Alex White brings us a deeper look into the meet against Georgia. If the Tigers hope to make it back to the Super 6 by year's end, they will have to keep improving like they did against the four-time defending champs, the Georgia Gym Dogs. Unfortunately, even with an almost two-point improvement from last week's score at Iowa, the Tigers fell to the Gym Dogs by a score of 196.85 to 195.95. The night started well for the Tigers as the Tigers executed six great vaults led by senior Ashley Claire Kearney's 9.95 to lead by half a tenth after the first rotation. However, landings on bars would come back to haunt the Tigers. As the Gym Dogs were having a stellar vault rotation, the Tigers were giving away tenth after tenth on their bar landings, scoring only a 48.975 and surrendering the lead to Georgia for good. We had a good bar routine, but it's going to get better. We've, we've, got, we've got better performances in the gym, and we're, we're going to get better. The perennial arch nemesis for the Tigers, the balance beam, caused the team a lot of trouble as well. A fall by Claire Kearney, in addition to a wobble like freshman Gloria Johnson and more steps on landings, gave the Gym Dogs a healthy cushion heading into the fourth rotation. At the end of the night, it was the Gym Dogs' own Courtney Coupets who stole the show in the all-around, appearing to be in late-season form already with a 39.650, with LSU's own Susan Jackson finishing third. I think that by the end of the season, everybody stay healthy and we continue to stay in the process and continue to train like we've been training and, and compete and improve each week. We'll be as good as anybody in the country by the end, by the end of the season. With a large improvement in scores from last week, the Tigers will now use that confidence and motivation in the meets for the rest of the season. For Sports Show Time, I'm Alex White. We now have the pleasure of welcoming our own gymnastics aficionado, Alex White, to the set. How are you doing today, Alex? Doing pretty good, pretty good. It's great to have you here. Okay, well, Georgia has a top-tier gymnastics program, but the Tigers could have come away with a win. 
How do you think this is going to impact the rest of the season? Do you think they're going to bounce back? Looking ahead, this loss is not that big of a deal for the Tigers. What is important was that it was a close meet, and the Tigers know they can compete with the best. A few more stuck landings, this meet would have had a totally different feel at the end. They can still win the SEC at the SEC Championship meet in March, and the Tigers will definitely be ready for that when it comes. Well, Alex, neither team had a flawless night. There were some obvious falls, but there was also some questionable scoring from the judges. Can you explain this for us a little bit? Very clearly, definitely were some oddities on Friday night. Summer Hubbard's floor score being low was due to the routine not having the level of difficulty that the other routines had that night and thus getting deducted with a standard two-tenth deduction for the routine being below standard. Therefore, she was starting in a hole she couldn't dig out of. But also, Georgia's balls were higher scored than LSU's due to the fact that later in the meet, scores tend to get higher due to the judges relaxing, which happens all the time. So you just got to deal with it. Okay, well, moving on to this weekend, the Tigers square off against Kentucky on the road. How, what can we expect from this meet? We can expect an LSU gym team that will be ready to go on all events. Kentucky should not give LSU much of a fight at all for the win, so the Tigers can focus on stuck landings and improving those small errors that caused some valuable tents the last few weeks. Expect a season-high score somewhere in the mid-196 range and an all-around win for ACK. Okay, Alex, we'll all be looking for a big win from the Tigers. Definitely, definitely. Well, thanks as always for coming in today. It's great to have you. No problem. And now I'll toss it over to Brian with more from the men's basketball team. Thanks, Mary Claire. The LSU men's team took their 13-3 record on the road Saturday with a trip to Oxford to face the Ole Miss Rebels. The Tigers were looking for their first win outside of the PMAC this season. It was a balanced scoring attack from the Tigers as four players scored in double figures, including 17 points from junior four with Tasman Mitchell. The Tigers jumped out to a 12 to nothing advantage and never looked back en route to an 83-51 victory. It was the first road victory for LSU this season and their second win in SEC play. They return home Wednesday to face Mississippi State at 7 o'clock in the PMAC. LSU women's basketball team wasn't as fortunate as the men this weekend. Number 18 Vanderbilt stopped the Lady Tigers from gaining their 18th straight SEC regular season win in a tough loss Sunday. The Lady Tigers came up short 75 to 67. LSU junior guard Allison Hightower led the team with a career high 22 points and four steals. But even Hightower's impressive performance couldn't make up for LSU's lack of physical play as the team gave up 21 offensive rebounds with 20 turnovers. The Lady Tigers look to bounce back Thursday night at 7 against Mississippi State in the PMAC. All right, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll have the results from this weekend in tennis and swimming and diving. And later, we've got all the information for you to get your spring intramural teams off the ground. Stay tuned. You're watching Sports Showtime on Tiger TV. Welcome back to Sports Showtime. Senior day proved to be a record-baking at the LSU Nadatorium as the swimming and diving teams dominated against Delta State. Swimming coach Adam Schmidt switched up the LSU lineup, allowing many of the Tigers to shine in races other than their specialties. Freshman Morgan McGee captured both the 1,000 free and 100 fly, while for the men, senior Julius Glockner also clinched a pair of wins in the 400 IM and 100 backstroke. But the real victory of the day came when two-time All-American Nico Dalman broke a 14-year-old school record in the one-meter springboard. Dalman and fellow senior standout Catherine Nolan reflected on the team's victories, expressing their hopes for the rest of the season. I got my personal best that I'm trying to break. I'm diving better than I ever have before, and we got the championship season coming around the corner. So just trying to keep on keeping on through the season. I think we've definitely come together more as a team after our training trip and Christmas break. and. We decided that we are a much better team than we were last year, and we were a much better team than we were the first half of the season. The Tigers head to College Station next weekend to face the Texas A&M Aggies before hosting the LSU Invitational January 30th to 31st.